So, so now we're going into game two. Iyer being the winner of that first game, going up one to zero. In game two, we do have Legend from Eternal Dreamers. Legend is a 16-year-old. He started playing about a year ago, and uh, he first saw StarCraft on Husky's YouTube channel. He thought it was really cool. He decided to get it, uh, and he apparently with no RTS experience uh, was able to place into Platinum and then worked his way to High Masters, and uh, he has played and won some Zeke tournaments with cash prizes in the past, so an experienced player. We'll see how he does. Great. I also want to give a big shout-out to DOS Keyboard for sponsoring the StarCraft II Community Team League. They'll be putting up five keyboards for the winning team, which is pretty cool. We'll be deciding that here in a few weeks, actually, as we get closer to the end of the playoffs. Also, if you want to put that link to the Reddit thread with all the info for tonight's broadcast, if people want to share the info around with your friends so we can get uh, all the people watching these great games. That's right. Cool. And I think with that, we're ready to jump into game number two. Yeah, let's do it. All righty. And we're going to start out here in the lower right-hand corner with our green Terran. His name is Legend. And in the top left-hand corner representing Team StarCraft Ascension playing commandingly against Terran in Game 1, it is Iyer. Iyer is such a great player, man. I remember when we casted these guys before, Iyer is just so strong. Uh, you know, and that's not to not to diminish the other team's players either, but he has just has such calculated, uh, very aggressive builds. It seems like so. Uh, I'm interested to see what we see out of him here. He also, from what I remember, doesn't do the same thing twice <laughs> very often. Yeah, he does have a diverse multitude of builds. Uh, you know, it, it's very clear that he knows what timings to exploit, what timings to get in before and uh, after to really maximize his pushes. So we'll see if we see any uh, cute timings like that this game. And we also do want to let everybody know that we're going to have an extended broadcast tonight. Once we finish the matches here from StarCraft Ascension and Eternal Dreamers, we are going to be finishing the series <coughs> Excuse me. That we started on Tuesday, but we're uh, had to be interrupted. Uh, so we're going to be resuming that series as well. So you get to see lots of Star SC2 CTL Starcraft action this evening. That is correct. Those games are from the previous round, the round of twelve. Uh, however, the Im the uh, results of those games have no implication on these games tonight. So there are no spoilers unless you have gone to StarCraft 2 Community Team League uh, website, sc2ctl.com, and checked out the bracket, then you have the spoilers. But <laughs> I would recommend against doing that until immediately following the broadcast, and then go check it out. It is a cool site with lots of good information. Yeah, double gas coming down from Iyer, so it looks like he's going to be going for the quick warp gate, quick mothership core, and or stargate. This is one of my favorite builds against Terran. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and predict proxy stargate. There is a pylon going down behind the third base here so if he does proxy a stargate back there it's not that much closer but it's close enough to make a difference it's also a little bit hidden uh taren may not ch check exactly there to uh look for any cute things i suppose the other we'll possibility is with a proxy pile like that is could be proxying uh, a twilight council on a dark shrine as well that's something we have seen before also mm -hmm. but there's a reaper being made so he's going to be able to get in there and scout out the fact that there's a missing pylon pretty early on and at certain times, these high-level players, obviously, when you get into a Protoss's base, you should be able to count the pylons and see exactly how many there are and know how many there should be. So if you go in at this point and only see one pylon, you know there's one somewhere else. <laughs> and it is Twilight Council that we're seeing go down. And, you know, Legend has to be curious right now as to what he's seeing in the base. Double gas, three probes in each. There's no uh, cybernetics core. There's only a gateway. Oh, I'm sorry, there is a cybernetics core. It's in the back. Yeah, so Legend uh, is looking around for what's going on as he's uh, bringing his Reaper first down to his third base here because that's a, that's a fairly common spot for the Stargate to be proxied, actually. So the fact that he doesn't see that there, he's either going to take a look at his other third up here or maybe start to have some thoughts that it's going to be a uh, hidden Dark Shrine. But, oh, actually, it's going to be a, a blink. hidden Blink. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> Now, this is really cool by Iyer, what he's, where he put this pylon, where the, if you look at the placement of the SCV from Legend right now, the vision of that SCV cannot see that pylon. It's just out of vision. So he was very calculating into where he decided to put this pylon, where he decided to build that Twilight Council, and uh, that SCV is going to get no information by ha hiding out there. There's some serious mind games going on here, Mr. Gallegation, because, you know, once you don't 
At this point, you should be seeing a uh, Oracle starting to be coming out if you're doing a proxy Stargate, and you definitely wouldn't see these two Stalkers also, so Legend has got to be thinking, what in the world is going on here? Well, he did see those two uh, those gateways being built off that one pylon in the back of the base, so he's got an idea that whatever it's going to be, whatever's going on, it's going to be gateway. Yeah, he's getting some mines now as well as marines and two bunkers at the front. But if he's going blank, that's you know this cliff back here by the uh, by the third base behind the rocks is a really nasty spot to exploit blank, especially against uh, someone who's heavily defending the front and investing in that. So we'll have to see what he does here. But this could be really strong. You know, my favorite addition, to, I'm going to keep going here, but my favorite addition to Protoss in Heart of the Swarm is the Mothership Core because it makes early Blink so much more viable because you don't have to get the Robo. Oh, this Reaper is going over there. Is it going to see? Uh, it sees, it the, sees the, pylon. the pylon. Only the pylon. So if he wants to go back and see what's there, he certainly can. Yeah, he does have that Reaper kind of on auto command, going to go see what he can see, going to go try and do some damage maybe? No, what he's just looking. What four warp gates opening. <laughs> yeah. So, so he knows that he's going to be under out. some pressure here real quick. And those stalkers do take out that uh, Reaper. I'm not sure if they showed their blink. I, I didn't quite I, catch what I don't think they did. But the Mothership Core is beelining across the map for this proxy pylon. He is going to be blinking up this back cliff, but oh, Legend knows exactly what's going on now. He's got yep. two bunkers on this back cliff, so he's going to be pretty well protected against this. And the majority of his units are actually on that cliff as well, so he has an idea. He does have that uh, mine and two bunkers at the front to try and deal with anything should they come in that way. Yeah, we'll have to see how the micro of Ira is here. That's what it's going to come down to because he does have a ton of stalkers. If he can get up here for this second bunker finishes. Oh, nice time warp there. That's a great time warp. That does make it difficult for those marines to engage here. And that bunker is going to drop before anything is able to get into it. Tank getting a few pot shots off, but Ira is just focused on getting into that main. SCVs are moving forward, trying to use those as a buffer to try and get some damage done. Two stalkers. Oh, only a few stalkers fall here. Yeah, if we look at units lost, Most he's only lost back. three units in that whole yeah. thing, and he did so much damage. He took out two bunkers, took out a gas, so Legend doesn't have any gas right now. Zero gas. Legend well, he's has. mining very little, too. He's only got the one, in the, the one SCV in the main. He's got a few uh, SCVs mining. In his natural, but the majority of his mining is cut off. Only about 12 units, I think, are currently mining. Yeah, as you said, I are very calculated in that. You know, he didn't knew he didn't want to commit too much, but that time warp he put down just kept those marines back far enough so they couldn't come to that other bunker. Great play, and look at look at his army too. All those marines are such low health, as well as the SCVs. There's three in the red, two in the yellow, and only two in the green. So most of his SCVs won't be that good of a buffer either. And trying to put down a missile turret to get rid of that mothership core, but it's not going to happen. And I are moving straight in, back into the main, taking out that bunker, taking out the marines that are there. Marines are forced to run back up, and this is a difficult position for Legend to try and defend as he's got to move his army around into so many different places. And yeah, stalkers are really, really good against only unupgraded marines without combat shields. So, I mean, <laughs> Iyer has more stalkers than there are marines, so he's in a pretty good position here right now. And... Legend's main does drop. His orbital command lifted up, but it didn't get anything done. Tech Lab is going to fall. Not going to stop the production of that Widow Mine, though. But more STVs trying to build bunkers, are just getting wiped out. And so much of the just necessary uh, structures of Legend are getting taken out here. He's got to move these. He's got to keep them if he wants to get anything done. But he's supply blocks, and not by... A very supply block. So. Yeah, Iyer keeps taking out his supply depots, so even if he could, he's unable to replenish units. Now he unloads all the marines from those bunkers, comes up to try and face off against these stalkers, but Iyer's going to only lose one stalker as he blink micros them back, taking out the marines with ease, so this is going to be definite GG for Legend. He has, He is rebuilding a command center in the third of Iyer now. An eventual GG. Sh but it's <laughs> yeah, it's definitely an eventual GG. I'm not sure if he's actually going to try and continue this. I mean, I think most players learn pretty early on that... Yeah, we've got 15 stalkers here in the main group. Two more in the back, seeing the barracks floating around. Yeah, he is in an unwinnable situation here. There's just wow. not... I, did, I don't know how... Did you see that blink right as that mine hit that saved all... No stalkers died, and it only did damage to two that went in the back. That was amazing by Iyer. That's just great control, great understanding of how the units work. 
honestly think that Legend is just building this command center here so that he's not revealed. And so he can keep this barracks here floating around and, uh, and I or not know where it is. Because obviously if you have only blink stalkers, you cannot, uh, you cannot, uh, hunt that down. But there is a mine here. Two mines we missed in the, uh, in the mirror line of Iyer. So Iyer's not able to mine right now out of his main. And that's his only base. So there's a robotics facility that is chrono boosting out an observer, so he's going to be able to take out those mines eventually. But even then, uh, I are still in a much better position than Legend, because Legend's not mining anywhere, and he doesn't does he even have any SCVs. He has one SCV. <laughs> he is getting an orbital command up, so he will be able to scan and take out that observer. But the observer is there, and the Widow mine is under attack, trying to move outside of the range of that observer. But it's much easier for observers oh, to move. And oh! <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Oh, but his orbital command has been found by that <laughs> army of stalkers and it is going to go down. That was a last hurrah for sure by Legend as this is going to be his last orbital command uh, scanning to take out that observer with his mind. Great play. So there are still three pylons on here. Mothership Core is still at the old base of Legend, but now Legend is going to be revealed as he does not have any more main bases uh, now he's revealed so Iyer definitely knows where that barracks is so what and, that and there's the, the final GG <laughs> all right yeah. so uh, legend definitely dragging that one out a little bit but man such an a such a, again a strong play by Iyer it's he seems quite unstoppable at the moment you know with uh seems like he read his opponent like a book yeah that proxy blink uh can be kind of neat you know it Keeps your opponent guessing as to what you're doing in the early game, not really sure what's going on when you walk into the base. You see a pylon, a gateway, a cybernetics core. It really, you know that something goofy's happening, but you can't have any idea of what it is unless you are able to scout it out. And the tricky placement that Iyer had there uh, really kept it from being scouted for a pretty long time, just right before he uh, planned that attack. And despite Legend's attempts, his defense was just not going to be strong enough against that all-in uh, stalker play there. I have to say a quick apology to everyone, too. I'm sorry the allegation was so stinking loud. Uh, we had some technical difficulties earlier, and I had to reboot, and I forgot to adjust the volume levels, so it should be evened out now. Uh, do give us any feedback on the stream. It looks like everything's going well, and we thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you very much.